Well, that was a bit of an adventure, setting up the HD Zero goggles with my RD Pilot um, configuration in my White Shark. Let's start by firing it up, and I should have all goes well. I'm just going to turn on the goggles. What you should see is coming up on the screen in a second will be, yes, you won't see anything right now. Well, you can sort of see it here because I have it showing on the screen. What will happen next is I'll plug in, you see here I have here mounted the VTX uh, inside the front of the plane, lots of airflow through, uh, through this air input here. So hopefully once the plane's in the air, I'll get lots of uh, cooling. If I plug in telemetry recovered. the flight controller, which also means connected to the VTX for power, I should find, and as you can see, here it comes, goggles come up, and there we go. There we have, okay, we don't need that, but what we do need is this, so here we have, there we go, that's me. Um, we have everything, we have the on-screen display, the RD Pilot on-screen display set up and running and all of that was, my goodness, a lot of challenge to get rolling. So what I need to mention is not all the problems that I had digging through the information to figure out how to get this to work, uh, not just the HD Zero goggles themselves, but also, uh, and more importantly, with, with RD Pilot, because, of, for example, a lot of the HD Zero documentation all talks about beta flight. And I don't have beta flight, I have RD Pilot. But RD Pilot fully supports MSP DisplayPort. But the RD Pilot website, uh, and in particular, uh, the this page, and I'll link to it in the description, had a whole bunch of information about setting up your OSD for walk snail and DGI, and, and it was a maybe just a little bit hard to untangle the HD0 stuff. What I needed to do was A, figure out what settings I needed with RD Pilot with HD0. Now this is actually not that difficult. First, whatever UART, you connect the RX and TX ports from the BTX2 on your autopilot flight controller. And on mine, I'm using UART3 because my Telem1 and Telem2 were busy with Crossfire. Uh, and you can pretty much use any for UART. And uh, UART3, I'm not using because I have a M10S uh, CAN GPS, so I'm not using the GPS port. So that's what I used. And so I've got Serial 3 and Serial 3 protocol must be set to 42. The answer, the ultimate answer, the Serial 3 board rate needs to be set to 115. Now when you set the Serial 3 protocol to 42, that should default to 115, you shouldn't need to change it. The OSD type for HD0 is 5 and the documentation was a little, I don't know, I found different um, information about that. Some seemed to read like it should be 3, it's not 3, it's 5. The MSP options, in particular bit 0, should be set to 0. In fact, I've got MSP options set to 0. For some reason, some of the blogs and posts and things like that seem to say or imply or if you read it wrong it might say five don't use five use zero msp options equals zero will work and one of the reasons why it works uh, is not just because of bit zero but one of the other bits which sets um, beta flight fonts don't need it anymore hd zero support has an art pilot font out of the box so if you just set msp options to zero you don't have to mess with anything it will just work the last thing you need to do is set for to get the osd to work 
as you can see, we have the OSD set up on the screen and it's all working nicely, the um, RD Pilot OSD. I just do want to connect to RD Pilot to my flight controller and just quickly show you the OSD configuration before that warms up too much. Because it's very, very cool. So, Mission Planner supports uh, a WYSIWYG editor to edit your onboard OSD and I'm running Mission Planner here on my Mac in a, in a window and uh, here it is and this is screen one and this is my OSD for this screen. Now as you notice when it initially comes up it's kind of looks a bit funny because um, everything kind of runs off the right hand side. That's because the OSD configuration in Mission Planner is defaults to um, low, low definition SD rather than HD, standard definition I suppose. And there's this interesting little check mark here, right up here on the right hand side. And the editor options, you need to turn that on. Once you do that, you get the full OSD and you can move things around on the screen and everything works great. Screen one, HD layout, and OSD one text resolution set to one. By default it's zero, that's SD for the full um, screen. Uh, OSD on the HD zero goggle, you need to have that set to one. There is an option in Mission Planner to have it set to two to give 60 by 22 uh, cells on the screen. Don't do that. It will mess up your display on HD0. Maybe it works with other goggles, doesn't work with HD0. Uh, what I also want to show you is that the sticks controls gives you, gets you into the menu for the VTX. So you can go to sticks. Um, now I use mode 3. Um, I have my sticks reversed so for you, that was probably would have been move the sticks into the center. I move the sticks out to the edge. Here we go. Here we have our VTX menu. You can set the power on the, the VTX. I defaulted to 25 milliwatts, but that can be set to, uh, set to 200. Um, pit mode. I like to set pit mode to 1 milliwatt, which is a tiny output of power but it still stays on in pit mode. And the shortcuts, option B is a brand new option just released in the latest version of the VTX firmware that means that you can switch your controller into zero milliwatt power output by um, moving two sticks but instead of moving them down into the bottom you move them up and so that you don't um, interfere with other controls that might use the sticks like arm disarm and so I've set that and so now if I move my sticks up look at that my basically my screen goes to no camera output no output but if I simply move them the other way then the camera comes on again camera off and that means VTX power off or camera on and so you can manage with some stick outputs the power output from the VTX while you're getting set up on the bench getting ready to fly uh, so you don't overheat your VTX before you're ready to actually get it in the air when you know the airflow will take over and it'll be fine so let me just quickly run through and make sure that I've got everything that I needed to do set up um, or needed to explain. I do want to basically just say um, there's four things you need. One is the wiring, connect the RX to TX, TX to RX, standard stuff. Set the parameters, uh, serial protocol, serial board, OSD type, five MSP options zero and OSD one text res to one for each screen that you want to have running in your OSD. I have one 
Um, you, can, you can set up more than one for whatever purpose that you need. And that's pretty much it. Uh, and I just want to highlight again that with this VTX, run it back. Use it back for power. Don't run the power off a standard flight controller like the Zealot H743 that I'm using or a Durandal or a uh, Pixhawk or something like that. If you do run a flight controller like one of the other um, flight controllers that have BEX on board, fine, but run your VTX off a of BEC. This BEC, this um, hinge u back. it's quite nice because with a little jumper, uh, I can set it to 7.4 volt output, which is 2S, which is exactly what this flight controller needs for power. So uh, there we have it. There we have the awesome, I love it, the HD Zero uh, goggles ready to roll. And uh, we'll be throwing this plane up in the air and giving it a shot, hopefully in the next day or so, if the weather holds. So there we go. Looking forward to some fun with this one. Tim the Plane Man. Over and out.